and uh, the History Channel is slowly pulling away further and further from us. <laughs> We're trying to catch them. Millions upon millions of they subscribers have 7 and followers. Million. No, it's like eleven or twelve. Oh my gosh! But drop us a review. <laughs> We'd appreciate it, and it helps the podcast grow. Now, Jen, why don't you tell us what we are talking about today? Today, we're going to talk about Fort Monroe. So for those of you who are joining, we had a very big following for the Lisa Marie Memorial. So there could be people who are joining from that. But what we usually do on Talk With History is we have a video that comes out every Wednesday, a Walk With History video. And that video yesterday was Fort Monroe. Right. And we've actually done two weeks in a row of Fort Monroe because there's so much for us to cover there. And I feel like we barely got to all of it. Yes. And so this is a time for us to kind of talk about what it was like to travel there, some of the things you didn't see behind the scenes, things about Fort Monroe. And then if you watch the videos, if you have any questions for us. Right. And if you see, if you're curious about the thumbnail, right, you probably clicked on the thumbnail of this video and it's that Fort Monroe actually is the only, and it's the largest stone fort built in the United States period yep. ever. Yes. And it's the only active duty fort for a very long time that yeah. had a moat around it. Yes. So it's it's just kind of old school and unique and has a ton of history. So I'm really excited to get into it. It is a huge fort. Even when you go there, I don't even think you get a real good sense of size but they show how you could fit all these other forts inside of it, yeah. how big that it is. And it has a, a long history because of the location and where it is in Hampton, Virginia. In 1609, when the first colonizers were coming to America, it's just a very strategic location close to Jamestown on that opening of the river and the, the riverway into Virginia. Right. So... It's always been recognized for its strategic location, and that's why it just has such a long history. And it makes sense, right? Back then, they're sailing up on ships, and they're like, mm -hmm. hey, what's the easiest place for us to land that looks like it could sustain where we want to be for however long it takes us to figure out what this new exciting land is all about? And they land there, and it actually used to be called Old, Old Point Comfort. Old Point Comfort. And it's strategic because you could watch to who's using the waterway. Right. Because these rivers take you to D.C. and to Annapolis. I think up to Richmond. Up to Richmond. So these are all those waterways right there. So you could basically sit there and kind of monitor everybody who's coming in and out. If you kind of picture it in your mind, if you're not familiar with the kind of Virginia area. So again, she it's mentioned south. it's south of, south of D.C. It's southern Virginia. Yeah, like we're, close almost to the border of North Carolina. We're south of D.C., not far from Norfolk, but basically almost right there on the border. So if you picture that in your mind, you can probably picture where it is if you're not great at geography like me. Yeah, and it's not on Norfolk. Like It's the landmass across the water from Norfolk. Basically, you have to cross that bridge that goes underwater to get to it, and but it stands alone in its lone little area, Hampton, Virginia, right there. And the fort is still there. And what's neat that we discovered when we went there is that people still live on it. Yeah, I, I wasn't expecting that. And you you can, it, it's not just military. Yeah. Like anybody can live on Fort Monroe and they have the old barracks and buildings and they look nice. And they have that huge, you'll see in our video, they have a huge like parade field neat because obviously it's surrounded by a moat so you you do have to drive across the moat and yeah. so there's the, it's like a little tunnel oh my god and so we're driving through in our, our suv and one car one car It'd be like oh you fold in the window so you can imagine you probably can't get many moving vans in there I, if any, if any. <laughs> small moving van i was surprised because there's the moat itself or the fort itself surrounded by the moat but then there's also land around that mm -hmm. Which there is an old hotel. Yes. There's an old hotel there that is now. It, so it became later after the fort was used. It became later kind of like a vacation destination because you're close to Virginia Beach. Right. And they built these nice vacation hotels right on the end of Old Point Comfort because you had a great vantage point of right. the waterways and the ocean. And so... The hotel, and what you see in our video, it still has its kind of Art Deco grandeur, but it's now a, like a senior assisted living center, but it looks pretty cool. But to kind of step back a little bit, the, the fort started being built, obviously, for its location. 
And then where a lot of people start getting interested in is kind of the Civil War era type stuff. So the fort is named Fort Monroe because it's built during the presidency of President Monroe. And it's President Monroe who basically says we need to build a fort here. And it comes about, like I said, it's always kind of been a strategic location and people had recognized its importance on the waterway. But during the War of 1812, the British had no problems taking over that area and they used the lighthouse there actually to their advantage. They took the lighthouse there and we show the lighthouse in our video and they used it for their ships yep. and to, to, to protect their own, their own lookout. Yeah, their own lookout and to protect what they wanted to do and basically their burning of Washington, D.C. And it became apparent that we were very vulnerable right. as a nation we didn't have these forts built up along the atlantic coast and here we were in a war with the with england and they had no problem getting to our most strategic point that protects these this major waterway to some of our major cities on the east coast and we had no way to stop them yeah so after the War of 1812 is over, they decide, let's start to build a fort here. And this could be one of the reasons why it's the most, it's the largest fort. Yeah. It's the most stone fort. It's massive. It has the moat around it. It could be one of those reasons because they really wanted to fortify this fort. One of the very unique things about it is w- who was the engineer of Fort Monroe and saw it through to the end of its completion was Robert E. Lee. And we, we had planned on trying to make a little short kind of fact about that so robert e lee actually went and was essentially stationed there Mm -hmm. 24 years old he was a west point trained engineer he was posted at fort monroe and uh, he had just gotten married to mary custis lee and we talk about that if you watch our arlington video because we go to arlington house which is where he was married and that was her ancestral home so that became his home and he was stationed at Fort Monroe. Yeah. So she comes down to Fort Monroe with him. Their first child is born there. So they're there from 1831 to 1834. And they live in Building 17. And that building is still there yeah. on Fort Monroe. It is now used by the National Park Service. But this is the beginning of this just very convoluted crossing uh, it's, it's, It really is just kind of center point for a lot of early American history, especially up through the Civil War. Yes. So it's completed in 1834. And then during the Civil War, it's Union held the entire time, which is interesting when you think that Virginia is a Confederate state. Yeah. And and you think about the minute that Sumner is is basically taken from the Union and Lincoln is made aware that the the southern states are seceding from the union he fortifies monroe yeah because fort monroe like i said is such a strategic location to these cities along the coast including washington dc well and the other thing if you and about fort monroe if we didn't mention it early on was it's an it's one hell of a fort. Yeah. There's there's one way on. Mm-hmm. So it's not like it's like surrounded by land. It's surrounded by water and there's kind of one yeah. aisle to get on. To to get on. So it's not terribly difficult to defend. And even from the water, you're not gonna be able to really take it from the water. No. So it's 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 incredibly strategic. And it has it's one of the things we show in the videos, it has like at the time was probably upwards of more than 50 cannons around the entire fort. And one of those, we showed the Lincoln cannon. They call it Lincoln gun. Lincoln gun, which the projectile is. It's a a 50,000 pound cannon. Yeah. And the projectile is 300 pounds. So the the cannonball is 300 pounds. It's huge. So if you watch the video, that's that's what that that Lincoln gun is. This fort has cannons in every opening and then they have a huge projectile gun so no one was taking this fort right this was the last thing you probably needed before to take dc or something like that so it's never taken and it was so safe that even lincoln will visit in 1862 and start to plan the battle of norfolk which turns out to be the battle of the ironclads and we go to the building that lincoln stays in which is a it's quarters one on fort monroe and actually lafayette had visited there in 1824 yeah jen was jen was pretty excited about so i got to walk up the stairs that both lafayette and lincoln stayed in but so this is like the nicest 
place to stay on the fort. And so that was a big part of their history. But Lincoln felt safe enough to go there. Yeah. Even when you think that Virginia is a Confederate state. Yeah, I guess I, I didn't really think about that too much. That's pretty interesting. It's interesting. Like he's taking, it, it, it's a lot of like, I think bravery in a lot of ways where he's like going to yeah. places. So, so inside of, you can drive in, you can see mm-hmm. inside of Fort Monroe and they actually have a, a pretty neat walking tour that if you get the little basic yes. map, it gives you the numbers, numbers and you can walk around. It's it's not it's not a, t- a lot of walking, but it's a decent amount. Yeah, and it's interesting. They have a lot of interesting locations on here. Like I said, the quarters one where Lincoln planned the Battle of Norfolk and Lafayette visited, but they have Building 17 where Robert E. Lee stayed, and they have a chapel of the centurion there, which is basically when you think of a fort, it's very all inclusive. Yep, they have, right? to, they have people were living there, people living there. And then if you're going to cut off the entrance and exit, you keep your you know, your living all the provisions inside. Yep. So there's a chapel inside, yep. inside the fort, and that chapel of the centurion, which is cool in itself because I think just the centurion is cool. But Eisenhower was there. Yeah. His son was his, married his there. His son got married. So when he was a general, he visited there and and he got to see his son get married there. And that chapel is still there today. And they still do services today. So you could go there on Sundays. Yeah. And that's right it, here in the chat. Readout Productions. Yes. It, it, there was a lot of people there. There's, I was surprised and I was kind of pleasantly surprised again not as not the history buff Mm -hmm. at how much there was there because there was just so much concentrated history in this one single spot they think about it it's been around for 400 years they think every president has visited maybe not the last couple but i know that obama was there he's he's the one who declared it a national historic landmark because it was an active duty army fort Mm -hmm. all the way up until 2011 yes so it's only been a little over 10 years that it ha- that it hasn't been an active duty military installation. Yes. But Grant was there. President Garfield, I know, was there. Yeah. I mean, the, pretty much every president has stayed there at one point because it's so safe. Yeah. And it probably in that quarter's one, which is closed to the public right now, but they're re- renovating it right now oh, to I make it that. open for people. So that would be very cool when they come out with all that. So, history. yeah. So you can do this kind of walking tour of Fort Monroe, mm-hmm. which was really, really neat. It'll take you around to the Lincoln Gun, to the chapel, to the it, a 400-year-old tree. They actually had a name yes. for this 400-year-old tree. The it was pretty cool. Longer Morn Oak. They take you over to the place where Lafayette stayed and Lincoln stayed. And then actually one of the first places you can go to is the Casemate Museum. I want to really talk about what a Casemate is because you will see these in a lot of forts and Fort we had it any place that's going to have a lot of like ammunition so cannons usually uses like a casemate kind of architecture yeah. and that is a, a dome it's like a dome architecture and they use it like an arch and it's because it's just a very stable architectural feature yep. and it can take a lot of weight and it can shift a little so you don't have to worry about you know where the pressure is going but one of the great things about it if something explodes inside of it contains that it contains the explosion you'll see that a lot in armories they have this arch kind of brick structure or cement structure above them because it will contain the explosion if there's an internal explosion inside yeah so so the case meat museum it's free. It's as, free. As far as I know. Yep. You have to go over to the visitor center, get your ticket, and then go to the Casemate Museum. It gives you some history of the fort and then using it as living quarters. But yep. the coolest part. The coolest is, the, the coolest part was if you saw our second Fort Monroe mm-hmm. video was that it was the prison cell of Jefferson Davis. Yes. So after they catch Jefferson Davis, he's taken by ship to you know, old point comfort where the lighthouse is and he's disembarked from the ship and taken into Fort Monroe. Yeah. And, and, our, and that video is doing decently for our channel and people have some strong opinions about Jefferson Davis. Sure. And honestly, I read those strong opinions to you because even at the time he's held there for two years and he's, uh, he's held, held there from 19, 1865 to 1867 and people just didn't know what to do with him. So, as you remember, we talk about the end of the Civil War and Lincoln being assassinated and then Johnson becomes president and this country has just been at war for four years yeah. and they've just 
brought in the, the states back into the union, they really want to do a lot of like healing and reconciliation. And they don't want a lot of this animosity and, and this long drawn out public long, trial yeah. so yeah. they don't know what to do with him right they should we hang him for treason because he's brought up on three charges and i read those to you in the video he's brought up on the assassination of lincoln yep. he's brought up for treason and then he's brought up it's mistreatment of troops or yeah something mistreatment like of prisoners of war yeah which they both did and he's held there for two years and people are like, should we hang him? Should we let him go? And eventually they let him go. But with um, they revoke his citizenship. He's no longer American. Yeah. And he doesn't really have much of an issue like working through the rest of his life in the South. I mean, he is shunned upon. Yeah. But he and, can and write he, his memoir. And even like readout productions mentioned in the in the chat, mm-hmm. right? He's talking about how unhealthy he looked. I yes. showed that one picture of his yes. end of his time there, and I believe you mentioned in the video that his was his wife. His it was wife was allowed, allowed to, to come down because he actually got pretty sick at one point in time. The casemates, once you're in there, if you visit, it's very damp. Yeah, it's it's made of brick, and you're on the uh, the Atlantic coast of the South, so you can imagine the humidity. And just the dampness in the air. And for when we were in there, they had tons of fans trying to keep out yeah, the humidity. Yeah, even while we were in there. But without that, you, I could see you could get very sick. Of moisture could get into your lungs. Yeah. I see the ammonia being rampant. So, yeah, he, he was very sick towards the end of his life. So they let him off. They let him go free in 1867. And then, of course, he after he passes, and I tell you that he's eventually pardoned. And... I think someone made a point that although Davis is pardoned by President Carter, he yep. also pardons Lee at the same time. Oh, that's right. And I don't know if anybody knows if any other Confederates were pardoned at that time. Yeah, that'd be interesting to but, find but out. But I know those two for sure. Yeah. So uh, the Case Museum, aside from just like literally hanging out in the cell where Jefferson Davis was for two years, which... It's it's one thing to kind of walk around an area where like yeah Lincoln walked over here he walked up these steps and then you're you're sitting here filming in a in a cell where it's like the the president of the Confederacy lived yeah. right here for, looked out for, this for window. two years looked out this window and like slept on that bed and had to know. stare at that American flag which I thought yeah. was great yeah so they they hang the American flag in his cell a big huge American flag. 35 stars at the time but and that flag is still in that cell and you can go there and see it yeah the casemate museum was was really really neat they had all sorts of displays on what life was like that the officers were living they some of them had their families with them Mm -hmm. we just like their wife not like three kids because it was small quarters the museum itself was really neat you can walk through you can see all these different things you can see more massive cannons Lots kind of, of cannons all, there. all the art- artillery, right? Mm-hmm. And so they were, they kind of show some of the technology back then about how they managed these cannons and how they would shoot out of these casemates. Yeah, so put keep them on their... Little track. Their tracks, because you know as a cannon fires, it's going to fling back, and then the, you know, you're going to pull it forward again, and they have all the tools to show you how many people it takes to fire a cannon and work a cannon. And then a lot of these cannons were found in the moat. Yeah. Because this was a working fort. So you don't think they had all these cannons in these holes while this was a working fort. Who are they using these cannons for today, right? Right. right. So when they were done, they basically threw all the cannons. tossed them over the side. Into the, into the <laughs> moat. And then when this became a national historic landmark, they searched the moat and brought all the cannons back up, refurbished them, and set it up how it would have looked during the Civil War era. So if you're wondering, like, what, did they just leave these cannons here. No, this is a working fort. So yeah. it's, it's a working building, you know. So that was interesting to me. But I thought Poe, Poe was there yeah, Edgar before Allan Poe. Lee. So Poe was there in 1928. And they have like a little spot and they talk about some of the famous soldiers that, that, that kind of were posted there for a short period of time. And the connections with them. Yep. So like Edgar Allan Poe and then... Ichabod Crane was there. Yeah, this is Ichabod K- Crane, the original. The original, like the yeah. actual name yeah. that Washington Irving uses. Yeah, so you funny. Know, we keep coming across him. <laughs> yes. He was a part of Fort Monroe. This is how long it has been a, a fort. Washington Irving's like Revolutionary War. and um, But Edgar Allan Poe is just there for a short time. Yeah. He's there for a couple months, but he's there through the new year. 
because he's there for 1828 to 1829. So yeah. he spends his New Year there. Who knows if he had watch on New Year's Eve. Yeah. So one, one, it's funny because one of the things we were going to try to turn into like a little short video or something like that was an interesting fact about Robert E. Lee that nobody else knows. Mm-hmm. And you could say, well, Robert E. Lee built the prison that held Jefferson Davis, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> which is which is kind of ironic, right? Yeah. Obviously, it's many years later, yeah. and you know, there's there's lots of history in between that. But if someone says like, "Hey, you know, tell me an interesting history fact," and you could say, "Well, Robert E. Lee built a prison that held Jefferson Davis," that probably would kind of short circuit for a little bit, not understanding <laughs> that. And you can tell, well, Robert E. Lee built it when he was a young lieutenant, and As, many years later, and it's so the fort has another really big historic impact during the civil war this is the first contraband come to this fort that was interesting they use the word contrabands because during the civil war when enslaved would leave their plantation the men would leave to go fight the war and they basically had no one there overseeing them anymore they would leave they could run away they could try you know try to make it north and when they first encountered Union officers, they weren't really sure what to do. Yeah. Because they weren't sure what to classify them as. Well, and, and because, again, Fort Monroe is in a Virginia. Con- a Virginia, and it's so far south, it's probably one of the further south points that the Union controlled. So when enslaved got away, it was one of the first places they could get to. Right. And they ca- they came up with this contraband. This is what Lincoln did. They came up with this contraband idea. General Butler was there. And this idea that they are a spoil of war. Right. So they are something you can commandeer during war. And that's this is starting Emancip- the Emancipation Proclamation. This yep. is starting the 13th Amendment. This is all precluding that conversation because they're not quite sure what to do here. And so when this becomes a contraband camp... And you have the first people who make it there. It quickly becomes a huge camp. Yeah. Harriet Tubman goes through there at some point in time. Harriet Tubman runs the hospital, the contraband hospital there. So, and schools start there. And Freeman schools start there. And Hampton University, which is a historic black college and university, is where Booker T. Washington went to school. Yeah. So, it is such a profound connection to... African American history and American history. So that is Fort Monroe. And I just think that's something everyone needs to recognize too about that location. They also have the marker yep. where the first Africans came to Virginia. Yeah, per per that statement. Yes. I encourage you to go check out the first Fort Monroe video because Jen kind of breaks down what they were trying to say with that marker, although historically it might not be a hundred percent accurate as most people would read it yes so it's a great conversation starter yeah and i think that's important to have we can't precisely measure when the first anybody were in america but we can say when first documented and they do use the word documented in that marker as well but i even that's not 100 percent accurate but we talk about that as well and and if you ever get a chance right again it's a lot of concentrated history in one spot and you can actually walk on top of the fort Mm -hmm. right so we actually went went over to they've taken pieces of it down but jefferson davis like memorial park yeah, which and they, is and they ha- and they ha- it's not even a park. It's like a ramp up to the top of the fort. But you can walk on top of the fort. So if you look at pictures of it, you there's there's inside the fort, which is like all the casemates. Mm-hmm. There's inside the center of the fort. But then you can actually walk on top of it. So you can walk around. The ramparts. The ramparts. The, and from those ramparts, they said you could see the Battle of the Ironclads. Yeah. I encourage you guys to check out the videos because both those videos do a good job of kind of showing you what's there. But it, it, it doesn't replace going in person. No. If you ever have a chance, it, it's a great way to do an afternoon. You could spend all day there if you really wanted to. Yeah, and it's beautiful and safe. So the one video is just outside of the museum, and the second video is just the Cape It's just museum. the Cape Museum. So Fort Monroe has been around almost as long as there's been explorers landing on the shores of America. For over 400 years, the strategic Old Point Comfort was the site of enslavement, army encampments, hotel getaways, freedom from enslavement, army cadet training, and yes, even a prison cell for Jefferson Davis. 
This moat-surrounded pocket of history has so many stories to tell, and we hope that one day you too will visit this historic landmark that is Fort Monroe. So thank you for listening to the Talk With History podcast, and please reach out to us at our website, talkwithhistory.com. But more importantly, if you know someone else that might enjoy this podcast or video, please share it with them, especially if you think that today's topic would interest a friend. Shoot them a text, tell them to look up the Talk With History podcast, because we rely on you, our community, to grow, and we appreciate you all every day. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you.